Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you're having a blessed day. Happy New Year. And, um, you know, it's amazing how we live in a world that's, and I'm going in this morning. Good morning again before I go in. Um, someone sent me this story and um, this morning, actually. So this is what I woke up to. And um, I, I, my heart goes out to his mother. The video you're about to see is very graphic. I'm going to tell you right now, as far as you're not going to see anybody hurt themselves, but the mother is very um, distressed. She's very stressed, um, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This father um, concludes my idea about what God wants from us. Come on, somebody, especially in this last hour. Uh, I'm going to be very transparent. This is going to be a very powerful video. I'm very I'm very serious. So go ahead and tag and share. It's not about Apostle Deanna, but I'm going to break some things down this morning because there's too much going on. And now I understand why God is asking me to do what I must do shortly. Um, I couldn't understand. I have to be honest with you. But now I see the, I mean, this concluded the whole picture for, for me. I was like, God, I see what you're talking about. God is tired of us conforming to this world. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. I'm telling you right now, you're not ready. And all on 2020, I'm about to, I'm about to hide line. God was on me like all, all, all week. He said, Deanna, I want you to see something greater, something deeper. And I could not understand what he was saying comp until this actually came. The whole piece of the puzzle is here now. I said, God, that's what you've been saying. Church, we have to wake up. We have to wake up. And I'm not talking about just wake up to um, what God is saying, but what he wants us to do. All right. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm going to start it off because I got some powerful things to tell y'all. Okay. So anyway, let's go ahead and let me slow this down so y'all can get the full effect of what God is saying. All right. So Bryce Grouty, um, he was um, going to Georgia Tech. He had just got signed and he, they say he committed suicide. Notice what I said. They say he committed suicide. So I'm going to show you this video about what his mother is saying. Now, my heart goes out to her, but I also don't understand if there was any um, spiritual counseling. Where was the pastors? Um, no one, Nobody could help this woman because when you see what I'm getting ready to show you, you're going to understand what I'm saying. All right. So this is her explaining her son's death. Okay, and I want y'all to listen very carefully because I'm going to break this thing down. Um, I believe he was getting awake. I believe that somehow he must have asked God to show him something because when you get awake spiritually, that means that you ask something. So listen to this. I'm not going to show the whole thing because it will move you and I'm not trying to do that. And I also want to do another disclaimer. I'm going to say it again. Y'all keep talking about mental health. <sighs> Let me slow this thing down. You know why the enemy keeps talking about mental health before I even show y'all this? Because he knows the only way, and I need y'all to listen to me, church, and people that are not church, it don't matter. The only way you can cast out a demon is by the demon name. So what he does is he surnames everything, mental health, that's a demon, lying, that's a demon, stealing, that's a demon. I'm so sick of this doggone church. Yeah, I am. That little boy had it right. I'm tired of this church. That's why we can't cast out demons because you must know the demon's name. So they surname everything so we don't get to cast out that demon. Oh, yeah, that's what they've been doing. Hallelujah. All right, so here we go. And this is quite sad. I'm going to tell you right now. So if you're weak, you, you, gonna, you, know, you ain't going to last long on this video. Hold on. He kept talking about the signs and the symbols. He kept talking about the signs and the symbols that he was seeing all over the place. And that he could see the world for what it really was. He kept saying that he could see people for who they really are. He was happy, though. He was talking about his future. <laughs> he was talking about going to Georgia Tech. And 
mean, we were having a lot of spiritual conversations. He had a lot of questions. He had a lot of questions about spirituality and life. kept asking me if I was okay or if his brothers were going to be okay and I kept telling him yeah all day we sat in the car yesterday because we didn't have anywhere to go <laughs> and he sat next to me all day just talking I was stressed out. I was too stressed to really deal with it. And I kept telling him I had just started my period. We were on the streets again, homeless. The little job I got wasn't paying me all my money on time or in full. And I was so stressed out about taking care of my kids. Around 10 o'clock last night, I finally got us a hotel room, but we still had to wait for Brayden to finish working. We were parked behind Brayden's job waiting for him to finish working. And I told him, I said, Brayden, Bryce, you have to dig within and fight these demons that you're fighting. I was told him like I wasn't strong enough to help him right now. I didn't see him, so I went down. 
downstairs. I checked the car. The blanket was gone. So I know he came to the car, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I came back up to the room and I saw that he left his phone in his wallet and his shoes. I sat there for a minute. I sat there for like 20 minutes just thinking, just thinking like, come on, I know you're going to come back. I know you're going to come back. He still didn't show up. So I woke up Brayden. I told Brayden to go walk around, go look for him. Brayden left and I I felt something in my soul. I just started bawling, crying. And then Brayden came back without him and I started bawling, crying some more. Brayden was like, calm down, he's okay. But I knew, I knew in my heart he wasn't. his dad he talked to his dad yesterday and that's when it got worse it got worse after he talked to his dad before he talked to his dad he was just talking for a few days just i'm you know just talking about just in circles just talking to about life, about the things that we were going through as a family over the last couple of months being homeless, the things that he had to see me go through (laughs) because we were homeless. But after he talked to his dad, he started getting paranoid. Like he asked him to walk across the street to get me a ginger ale and he was paranoid. Started talking about not being trapped by doors and mirrors. So this morning when he disappeared, I texted his dad. And I was like, I wish you would disappear from our lives forever. In that moment, I knew something was wrong with my baby. And I cried myself to sleep. I woke up 7 o'clock this morning. That was at like 4.30. I woke up at 7 o'clock this morning, still no Bryce. I started calling everybody. Nobody heard from him. No friends. Nobody heard from him. I called my brother. and My brother said he was going to start making phone calls. (laughs) My brother called me back and he said there was a report that somebody got hit by a train at 4 in the morning. In my heart, I knew it was my baby. I called the hospital. They wouldn't give me any information on the phone, so I went to the hospital, and I couldn't stop crying because I knew it was my baby. I knew it. Brittany kept telling me he wouldn't do something like that, but he hasn't ever acted like how he's been acting for the last three days. Finally, the nurse walked up to us with a piece of paper in his hand and said, this is the number of the detective. We ID'd the body and it's Bryce Zane Gowdy. My baby walked in front of a train and he killed himself. Okay, so basically I want to stop there because that's the whole thing and then she keeps going on and on. So this is what I want to talk about. Everybody keeps saying mental health, mental health. You guys, if we don't stop saying that, people cannot get delivered because that's a surname. I keep talking about, we're talking about demons. So let me go ahead and break this thing down. Let me go ahead because people, you know, I know it's a, let me tell you something. People run game. 
Uh, I'm just going to break it down. People run game. How do how they run game of possible? Everybody after a dollar, man. So if I can get you to think that you're crazy or something, then I can drain your money from you, but never heal you. Jesus did not do that. Jesus did not say he was a psychiatrist and that you have mental health. He cast out that demon. Hallelujah. We ain't casting out demons because like I said earlier, it's a surname. Well, if I give it another name, you can only cast out a demon by its name. And, I, and you know what? I'm going to do a video about that too. But right now I'm going to um, mind binding spirits. I want to talk. I want to bring this thing out. Moving on to chapter six It's called mind binding spirits, which is rather short chapter, but with, with powerful messages. This chapter looks to me like a t continuation from the section of the evil forbidding in chapter five. And we're talking about Joyce Meyer's books, uh, Battlefield of the Mind. It's called Mind Binding Spirits, that letter to belief of God's plan. Um, now, this is what mind binding spirits do. They actually stick their hand in your in your brain believe it or not and toss it to where you get confused come on somebody hallelujah and i'm not kidding so this is what the church needs to go back to mind binding spirits learning teaching people how to combat his mother didn't know how to combat so I know I don't blame her and I pray that nobody else is blaming her. They may say about the homeless situation. I get it because that's all people do. People will look for the evil and try to say, well, she should have blah, blah. No, you don't know that woman's story. So you can't talk on that. I'm talking about one aspect of this whole ordeal. And that is the mind binding spirits. But I'm going to tell you something. If he was talking about signs, Illuminati, stuff like that, y'all already know what time it was because he had just signed with um, Georgia Tech. Y'all understand what time it is, right? Y'all really understand? Now, I don't know who his father is, but she says when he talked to his father, it got worse. So something is something happened on a bigger level. Y'all can say what y'all want to say. I'm not crazy. And I know y'all, well, everything ain't a conspiracy. You know what? Dealing in this world, yes, everything is a conspiracy. Because the devil's out to steal, kill, and destroy you. So that's a conspiracy to me. Hello? How you doing? Come on, somebody. Well, let me tell y'all about what he's talking about these spirits. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 15 and 17, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That, that's where most people get caught right there. Y'all want to be like the Jones. But then when God come back, y'all going to be crying, talking about, well, God, I, I want to be with you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying right now. Hallelujah to his name. And basically what I'm saying to you guys is that I, I want to go back to this one right here for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but it's of this world and the world pass it away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the father abided forever. I'm going to tell y'all something right now. If the church don't get out of trying to be, and I'm going here. Everybody want to be famous. Everybody want to be a star. You after that bad. We're after that bad. I'm going to say we. Because God look at us as the children of Israel. We don't see what time it is. You don't see that people are dying. People are dying. This young man took it. I don't think he took his life. I'm real with you. Um, we know demons were involved. But it was something bigger. It had to be. You know, I'm not saying because I wasn't there. But I know spiritually what I'm saying is that. God is saying we're not, the church is not doing its job. We're supposed to be equipping people to be strong in the Lord, but yet everybody's after money. So you're pimping people for money, but you're not building them up spiritually, mentally, financially, emotionally. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. But you know what? I'm a, I'm a walk by example. Oh, I'm about to go here. Y'all going to trip out when I'm getting ready to say. I take a minute just to think. I feel like God is telling me to quit my business, walk away from Chef DD, and do ministry full time. Y'all don't understand the, the couple of days with how people have been talking to me. Oh, it sounds crazy. You just making it. You just got your own place. You just, I don't care what nobody say. If God tell me to walk away from it all, I will do that. And y'all can call me crazy all day long. Because guess what? That's taking extra time away from helping somebody. Helping to pull somebody to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
I see what he's doing. Oh, I see the picture. I don't know if you see the picture, but I see the picture. We're supposed to be about souls first. See, I've accomplished some goals. That's fine with me. But what I don't want to do is get caught up in this world. Get caught up in um, wanting to be this or that. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. It's too much truth, huh? Everybody, because I asked a question in class. And let me go ahead in this video with this. I asked a question in class. Who are you? Because when you ask most people who they are, I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a this. I'm a that. Who are you? Because most of you don't know who you are. That's what you do. Who are you? Who did God call you to be? What did he tell you to do? Hallelujah. I will not be part of this world. I will not be part of this world. Let me bring it back to what I was saying. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Y'all love the world. Y'all know it's true. Y'all know it's true. And Jesus been on me all week about this decision. And I couldn't understand the, the full capacity until I got sent this story. We're supposed to be about our job. The apostles, what did he say? He said, don't take nothing with you on your journey. I'm going to say it again. He said, take nothing with you. Hallelujah. We, we got too much stuff. Y'all ain't ready for me. We, we, we caring too much people. Y'all still ain't got it, huh? We caring too much people. Accept what he said to do. Hallelujah. 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 All right, I'm done. I'm not going to go around and around in circles. But this story broke my heart. This story broke my heart this morning. I woke up just my spirit was so it's like I was his mother. And I know it sounds crazy. I can't explain to y'all. But that's when you love God. You love God's people. I was so broken, you know, because people need us. People don't need us to be rich. And I know everybody want to be rich and everybody want to do. That's not what they need, people. That's not what they need. They need healing. They need Jesus. They need deliverance. They need peace. And if y'all don't see what I'm saying, I don't know what to tell you. The church has turned over to a reprobate state to where everybody wants to, to be famous. Y'all don't see that? Y'all don't see what's happening? Am I the only one that see the falling away even from the church? I won't be involved in it. So 2020, I really feel this. I've been feeling this for a minute. And I guess I'm, I'm strong enough to say it now. You know, we all have dreams, aspiration. 